Rickle was one of the pioneers in do-it-yourself home improvement. An over-competitive and poor economic climate, as well as a bad merger, would kill what had become a northeastern, multi-state, big-box empire. Three brothers named Al, Mort, and Bob Rickle ran a family heating business for several years in Newark, New Jersey. In the early 50s, by some happenstance, the brothers ended up with a warehouse full of plumbing supplies. The three didn't work in plumbing, so they came up with a unique plan. They'd open the warehouse to the public and sell it all at retail price. Bill Ryan, a local plumber, was put in charge of pricing the inventory. He was also their salesman and helped customers find the supplies they needed and even gave them professional advice on home projects, a service people loved and one that the Rickles would replicate. In 1953, their warehouse store was opened in Union, New Jersey, as Rickle Brothers. In the war, Al was a sergeant in the Air Corps, where he learned a lot about supply chain management, an experience that would prove particularly useful for their new business. Rickle Brothers was a venture of necessity, but they were at the same time innovating in the creation of do-it-yourself home improvement stores. Pergament was another, often credited with creating the industry itself. They were a much older chain, at the time focused on wallpaper, paint, and art supplies. They'd soon expand their offerings and become a big competitor. Rickle's knowledgeable sales clerks garnered a great reputation among homeowners and professionals alike. The store was an instant success, leading the brothers to put everything on retail. Soon, they expanded the store with heating, electrical, and tool sections. They even came up with a mascot named Ricky Rickle. Two years later, the brothers opened a large, modern showroom in Paramus, New Jersey. It was nearly twice as large as the Union store and displayed everything they sold. Four years after that, they opened a supermart in Sakasana, three times as large as the Paramus showroom and five times the size of the original store. By the mid-60s, Rickle had five supermarts. The stores had grown to several departments, including bathroom, kitchen, paint, hardware, garden, lumber and building materials, and even a pool section. This was a big deal. As Bob's son-in-law, Arnie Cohen, put it, before Rickle, there were local hardware stores, but there was no central location for contractors or homeowners to get a full range of supplies for a construction project. After incorporating the company, they grew slowly and methodically. The average store size was getting larger with every new opening, and each unit generated millions of dollars a year. Unlike most retailers, Rickle favored offbeat and underserved communities. They bought land on the cheap and waited for a population boom, leading to new housing and infrastructure. That way, by the time these suburbs developed, Rickle was already well established in the area. In 1969, the brothers entered an agreement with the Supermarkets General Corporation. They had subsidiaries in multiple industries, but their biggest holding by far was Pathmark, one of the largest grocery chains in the country. Supermarkets General would buy a large portion of Rickle's stock. In turn, they'd become a new subsidiary. Soon, they opened their first New York location after which they renamed the company to Rickle Home Centers, a more modern and comprehensive name for a bettering company. In 1970, the Department of Commerce reported that between 1963 and 67, over 2,400 hardware stores and over 2,800 paint, glass, and wallpaper stores went completely out of business. The 70s were no less carnivorous. Rickle focused on keeping their sales up and staying a strong name against others like Pergament, who'd grown to 40 stores between New York and New Jersey. Another was Channel Lumber, a 24-store home improvement chain, mainly in Jersey. Channel's parent company owned a chain called Handy Dan. Its CEO was Bernard Marcus. Vice President was Arthur Blank. In 1979, both were pushed out during a power struggle for the company. 
the two would join together in co-founding The Home Depot, which needs no introduction. Lowe's is another well-known name. At the time, they had over 200 stores, and their annual report that year showed nearly $1 billion in sales. These two chains alone would change the face of the home improvement industry. Their ambitious expansions meant big, big trouble for our Northeastern rivals. Many homeowners hired professionals to do their projects, but the recession had cheapened the dollar, and now most people were doing it themselves to save the money. Rickle was a favorite among many, mainly because its stores were considerably larger than Channel or Pergament and offered more variety. Bob was the last of the brothers to lead the company, after Al resigned earlier in the decade. Bob retired that year, when Rickle had 23 stores in Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania. Mort Rickle died in July 1980, at just 61 years old. He also retired after selling to Supermarkets General, and enjoyed a nice, albeit short, retirement in California. Throughout the 80s, the younger crew at Rickle kept the company growing and relevant. New Jersey had big competition in home improvement. Much came from Sears, Kmart, and Bradley's. Pergament matched Rickle in store count, but Channel operated nearly double that. Vice President Charles Davis stepped up as president and CEO of Rickle. He was a 22-year veteran of the company, starting as a stock boy at the original Union store. Davis had a similar spirit as the brothers did for the company, and held a passion for its success. He knew that success started at the front line with the employees. He instituted a quality of life program, pushing a comfortable work environment and emphasizing needed breaks. Just as improvements at Rickle were being made, Pathmark was in shambles. Forbes referred to the chain as unkempt, dirty, and outmoded. Whenever Pathmark failed, Rickle paid for it. Meanwhile, Supermarket General was the target of an unwanted hostile takeover. They orchestrated a convoluted leveraged buyout to privatize the company and take on debts, making the company less appealing. This backfired. While they did avoid the unwanted takeover, they began losing value every year, struggling to pay off the debts. To top it all off, Charles Davis was fired that August. In 1990, when Rickle was in its worst condition, Home Depot began opening stores in the New Jersey and New York area. Not only did they offer lower prices, but their service was pretty top of the line. Meanwhile, Pathmark continued to get special treatment from Supermarkets General. Combined with the early 90s recession, this took away any chance of a Rickle comeback. During this time, they debuted Home, their so-called answer to Home Depot. This was meant to be a reinvention of Rickle, focusing on home decor, but it didn't get far past the prototype stage. Supermarket generals started dropping nearly everyone but Pathmark. In 94, EOS Partners, a group of New Yorker venture capitalists, offered to pull Rickle out of the Pathmark storm. Their plan was to merge them with Channel, making one large company out of the two competitors. The deal went through, and the Channel stores were rebranded as Rickle. This would have been great if their financials recovered, but this overnight expansion only hurt them more. Home Depot was already well on its way to becoming a strong Northeastern chain, opening stores everywhere they could. Even though everyone knew Rickle, the depot was taking their customers. They decided to really fight back. So hard, apparently, that in 1995, Home Depot sued Rickle, believing they were behind local smear campaigns. The smears claimed that Home Depot was bringing crime to the suburbs, which wasn't true. Meanwhile, some folks at Rickle headquarters realized their financials were actually worse than they thought. They were missing debt payments, and their credit was being stretched thin. The former channel stores weren't generating nearly enough cash. On top of that, the whole Northeast was in a retail slump. They needed serious reorganization, one that only a court could provide. The next year, Rickle filed for Chapter 11, and got over $90 million in financing to restructure the chain. 
Now they had to come up with a plan to save the company. Plan A, downsize the stores and present merchandise in an easier, smaller shopping atmosphere than Home Depot. This didn't work. Plan B, close more stores, bringing them down to 50. Didn't work. Plan C, streamline the company and try to pull in more investors. Still didn't work. In short, nothing was working. Rickle HQ was having a meltdown. October 1997, VP of Marketing Greg Hanselman announced, basically, we ran out of cash. They were also out of plans. They couldn't run their remaining stores any longer. In the end, they lay off 2,700 employees, liquidate their remaining assets, and by the end of 98, all Rickle Home Centers would be closed indefinitely. It's called Home Depot, a quote from analyst Terrence McAvoy. As for what truly did Rickle in, that sentence is all we need to know. Al and Bob Rickle died in 2008 and 2014, respectively, both at the ripe old age of 90. Along with Mort, the three brothers were Rickle. Home Depot wasn't messing around. They managed to uproot a dedicated, long-term customer base in a matter of a few years. It was unlike anything they'd ever faced, and if the claims were true, even playing dirty couldn't save them. 